Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we're taking a look at the largest mammal ever to walk on land, the Paraceratherium. This huge herbivore lived around 34 to 23 million years ago, standing up to 4.8 meters tall at the shoulder and weighing as much as 15 to 20 tons. Its remains have been found all across Eastern Europe and Asia. Many fragmentary remains of this giant beast were found during the early 20th century, but its taxonomic history is fairly complex. Due to the political situation of the time, Western, Soviet and Chinese scientists worked in isolation from one another and any published materials would be in their native languages. These scientists from different parts of the world did not try to share and compare their information, and getting a complete picture of these animals was hindered by wars and politics. The first recognised fossils of the Parasaratherium were discovered in 1907 by British geologist Guy Alec Pilgrim in Pakistan. These consisted of an upper jaw, lower teeth and the back of a jaw. Originally thought to be a new species of extinct rhino, it was later realised that the animal belonged in its own genus of Parasaratherium after more remains were found in 1910 by Clive Forster Cooper. The naming of Paraceratherium has had its controversies. In the early 1900s, other scientists were making discoveries and naming their finds. Other genus names were given, including Balacotherium and Intracotherium. But in 1936, Balacotherium was reclassified as belonging to Paraceratherium. But it wasn't until 1989 that Intracotherium and Paraceratherium were considered to be the same animal. And as Paraceratherium was named first, following paleontological naming conventions, that name has priority. However, there are still some scientists that make the case for the two animals being different. The Paraceratherium has a skull that is very similar to the rhino, although it has no horn. The bones above the nasal region are long, and the nasal incision goes far into the skull. This indicates that the Paraceratherium has a prehensile upper lip, similar to that of the black rhinoceros and the Indian rhinoceros. Or possibly it had a short proboscis, or trunk, like tapirs. The size of the animal and its long neck indicate it would have happily browsed for vegetation amongst the treetops, like a giraffe, using its proboscis to wrap around branches while stripping off bark with their front teeth. It would have needed to eat vast amounts of food, and so probably wandered huge territories. Its size can also give us other clues to its behaviour and lifestyle. While no skin impressions have ever been found, it is likely that it was hairless like modern elephants, rhinos and hippos. Overheating could have been a serious problem, and so it may have rested in the shade or wallowed in water and mud, much like its modern equivalents. Most predators of the time were fairly small, no bigger than a wolf, although bite marks on fossils indicate that even adults were preyed upon by huge crocodiles that lived in Pakistan during this time. It's likely that there is no single reason for their extinction, but Paraceratherium began to suffer as the Central Asian forests were replaced by grassland habitats. Once their food source became scarce and their numbers dwindled, Paraceratherium populations would have become more vulnerable to other threats. One final interesting bit of trivia before we leave today. The shape of the Paraceratherium's body was an inspiration for the creators of the Atat Walkers from Star Wars. Well, that's it for today, and as always, I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you have, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new. Well, I hope to see you next time here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.